I don't get hung up on that either because I'm mm. I'm still so forward focused. And the thing that I've last couple of years I've really tried to take it and recognize is, and I bring it back to you, the people part. Like I I do recognize and I am very proud of the small group of people who we've been able to raise up as leaders into certain positions where they've been able to start building the, their own businesses within our organization. everybody welcome back to the big dog podcast we're excited to be here i'm really excited about this show because i have one of the greatest personalities on the planet and someone who's been become a great friend over the last year and totally unexpected friend but i'm so appreciative of her and her husband and it's just like a lot of my friends you know it's funny you know you, you get in the rooms you need to be in and somehow you get connect people that you're supposed to be connected to and that is where i found sunny dwyer welcome sunny how are you i awesome and very honored to be on today and and like you said a very unexpected but i think we were put in that place for a reason so so who was it who connected us initially was it doug doug mitchell it was doug mitchell yeah. So and so Doug, who is an Apex member with us. Sorry, my eyes. We're in like full on pollen right now in Virginia. And so all of a sudden my eyes start itching and now they want to roll with it. Um but you know, so Doug sends a text saying, Hey, you two should connect. And uh we're like, All right, sure. So we we did. We did a call and it was a ton of fun. And then the next yep. time I was in town, we got together for coffee and had a ton of fun and you had just gotten off a phone call with someone who and you're like oh my gosh like another photographer friend of mine she's actually from virginia too and i said what's her name like i know every photographer in the state of virginia and no shit i knew it was aaron she's like right by you (laughs) yeah yeah i I know her yeah i know her and it's it's really funny i'm like what are the odds of that i don't know it's crazy i i believe everything happens for a reason so clearly there was a connections that had to yeah. be met, but and i'm totally crazy. not that person who says oh what's their name like i'm gonna know the photographer it's a random ass photographer you know across the country but hey here we are you know yeah. we do so sunny talk a little bit about about you so first family oh <sighs> first family all right so i've been married to my crime my partner in crime shane for it'll be 20 years in october Congrats. so excited about that and we've done photography before we were married so okay. we kind of met on the photography scene, I was shooting in another town and he was working with his dad as a partner. And so that's how we met. And we have three amazing children between us. Um, Carter is 18. He graduated early in December and he's actually working for us. So to see Logan, it's so cool to me how not in a million years he would ever have said, I'm going to go back to work with you, mom and dad. He's not that kid, but he sees the entrepreneur side of it now. And so he is working for us full time, which is awesome. And he's crushing it in the sales world. I don't know too many 18 year olds that could do that. He's great. Ava is our 17 year old princess and she can do no harm. She (laughs) is a junior. (laughs) She's an amazing girl, very big heart, lover to death, wants to be a teacher, which is going to be a tough road. So I I can't stop her from that. Her heart is set on on teaching people. And so she's excited about that. Charlie, he's my 12 year old. He is my baseball boy and everything sports, wants to be a sports fanatic, but he's got the biggest heart. He's kind of got the best combination of Shane and I smarts and heart. And so that is us. And we have two dogs, big booty, Judy, Abby. I know you love that name. And she is 13 and locked out of this room right now so that she doesn't interrupt me. And then Drake, our newest, he'll be one year next month. He is a mutt. He's golden yeah. retriever backwards. He's like the, what everybody doesn't want. So his mom's golden retriever and his dad's golden doodle. So he's 75% golden yeah. retriever. And everyone's like, why'd you do that? I'm like, I don't know. He was cute. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't base it on anything else. So that's my fam. That's fun. You know, I, I forgot your daughter, same, same age is mine kiki you know both juniors both want to be teachers and we're kind of like the same thing like oh okay and i'm like all right and if i I say anything against it i mean she will double down on it because that's how she is but i did tell my wife i had an idea i said babe there's several reasons i would like to point her away from education right but and now i i love teachers i respect teachers i have all the respect in the world for teachers 100 um i just think the environment is not an environment i would want my daughter to have to to navigate but anyway 
I told her the second to that. I also don't know that compensation wise, my daughter and the comfortability she's accustomed to uh, will will allow for that. So I told Devin, I said, you know what we do? We take a teacher's salary and we remove a rent for an apartment, moderate car payment, car insurance, cell phone bill, just your typical bill. We take that out of the salary and we just give her the net pay after those things. Right now, I don't think she could live off of it. And yeah. she has no response abilities and so her joke is you know well i'll just i'll i'll get a i'll get a rich boyfriend and you know or i'll come work for you part-time i'm like what are you gonna do for me part-time she's like no we'll just say i'm working but you can like pay me okay as your current rich boyfriend you know it, it's not a plan that's gonna play out kid so no it's funny. Ava says the same thing. We always like, you're going to have to marry very wealthy if, if your heart is set on teaching. And I'm trying to get her to go down the road of stop, stop pencil, like putting yourself into this. I got to be in middle school math is what she yeah. wants. And I'm oh, like, wow. think bigger. Think of the entrepreneur side. You could own a private tutoring company and you get the cream of the crop. do what you want to do and have others yeah. underneath you. Like I'm trying to get her in that, but man, it's tough. And so she's looking at A&M as her top school right now. Oh, nice. And yeah, and and I like AM. I think AM is great. It's more on the conservative side. <laughs> She's like, well, at least it's not University of Texas. And that's a whole nother podcast. But yeah. Um <laughs> so we're we're talking about this and keeping an open mind. I I know she'll be shown the right path. I know things will work out. I just don't want her to get out of college because I'm not paying for that. We have been very upfront. We will not we are not spending our money on that right. for our children. We will help you in, in other ways, but you're need to you're gonna need to take out a loan. Simple yeah. as that. You want the education, you take on the debt. So you decide do you want fifty thousand? Do you want a hundred thousand, a hundred and fifty thousand? What do you, what are you willing to spend yeah. for this education? Yeah. That's just how we think. Though. It's funny with the kids, like when they have entrepreneurial parents and you might have a kid who's kind of wired the same way. And then you have the one who isn't, and yep. you're trying to explain, well, Hey, you know, one thing you could do, or, you know, you could go this angle with it. And it's, it's, I have found it to be very frustrating for her and I, where I'm yes. trying to like, cause she can't see it that way. Her mind doesn't work that way. Whereas Logan can see the alternatives. And again, just a different way that he's wired and he, he has things that he wants to do. And, you know, for as long as he wants, once, as long as he can deliver, he's got a place here. But if he comes yeah. to me and says, Dad, I'm going to go do this, and I've got this idea, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, yep, I support that. Let, yeah. Let's well, let's go figure it out or go figure it out. If I can help, let me know. But you try to have that convo with a person or a child, for that matter, who doesn't have that type of wiring. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're like, well, that's not what it is. Teachers teach at the middle school math. Like there's no, there's who cares that people are trying to run away from public education and go private and homeschooling numbers are higher than they've ever been. There couldn't be some software opportunities out there. There couldn't be some online programs out there. Oh no, I'm going to be in this building with these yes. seventh graders teaching math. And it's just how they're wired. You, you, yeah. you mentioned Texas A&M. So Kiki, she, her top choice right now is Devin and I's alma mater here in Virginia, uh, James Madison university. That's great. Except for the fact Devin and I's Asses are moving to Texas after she graduates. <laughs> so I'm trying to get her to look at some schools in Texas. I'm like, I'll show you all of them. We can go do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So we had this plan and we had dates picked out. We're going to fly out. We're going to go see the different schools and we we're going to be all over the state. And I didn't care. Like, whatever you want to look at, look at. I'm getting ready to buy the plane tickets. I said, Kirsten, babe, like, is this an absolute waste of my time? Is there any chance in hell that you go to college in Texas? And she said, Dad, there is no chance in hell I'm going to college in Texas. She goes, you asked me to have an open mind. And so I will have an open mind. And that's why I said I would do it. But there's no chance in hell I'm going to college in Texas. And I was like, well, we don't need to waste our time doing all this stuff. So then her ass tries to hustle me about a week ago. And we, <laughs> I love her. She she comes out and she says, she sits down with Devin and I, cause we're taking her out to a concert in June out in Dallas and we're taking her and one of her little friends to who, uh, Noah Khan is. Oh, good. Yep. Yep. You know that? Okay. Logan. I do. Knows. Only because Ava's been asking me to go. So, okay. Well, apparently we're going in June. I think it's the ninth or 10th or something. And so she comes home the other day and says, Hey, so guys, how about Allie 
takes Kylie and I to to Dallas for the concert and we can stay at the condo and you guys don't even have to go. And then another time me and and you guys go and we'll go look at Texas A&M and University of Texas. Daddy, if you want me to see SMU or TCU, we can go do that. You, one, you need to apologize for being so disrespectful because you're going to come in here like you're going to hustle me. Like I invented this game. Like you don't you don't come at me with she's just gonna take us to the condo you don't even have to come dad this is yeah, a win-win yeah, for you yeah but. all of a sudden it goes from dad you want to go to a concert to and i'm thinking oh my gosh and i knew i was getting played from the jump but i was gonna take it because i was gonna get yeah. time with my daughter nope then it's it. Allie's fine she's an adult she can go with i'm like i don't even know who this person is and now <laughs> i do know who the person is but it just was so funny because she was legit trying to hustle the hell out of me about this thing. And I'm like, child, no. If your friend wants to go to the concert, she can come on too. And we'll, well, you guys go to the concert. I don't have to go, but I'm not sending you all to Dallas for the weekend without me. You could find Aunt Sunny. I could, I could hook you up like we could do that but then she'd be like wait who's sunny yeah now no she'd love you she'd love you as long as it's not me everything else is fine it's it's like but if, you know what? You could, maybe we play this college team thing with that because you'd be like look there's a lot of concerts in dallas there's just a lot. saying there's a lot of concerts there's a lot a lot a lot of things that i thought there's she would like but i think yeah. i like it too much that she just has to be anti oh so she's got you gotta you gotta make it her idea we gotta work yeah. on this yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's been a project. So talk to me about how, speaking of Dallas, you guys were Nebraska, right? Yeah. And that's born and raised. Go Big Red, born and raised. Go yeah. Big Red. Mm -hmm. And COVID time frame, you guys are like, hey, let's move to Texas. <laughs> it was a, a, the best and worst decision of our life. Yeah, we knew one person in the whole state, Shane's brother. He had moved here. He's been here now over 10 years. And we kept coming down because in Nebraska, we were one of the bigger studios, but we were still, so, you could only be so big in Nebraska. And we had three kids to support and we didn't have a ton of money at all. And so when we went on vacations with three kids, it was like, all right, what's the, what's the cheapest spot we can go to? And Dallas kept coming up. And so we would just come down for the long weekend, stay at his brother's house. We had a great time and we yeah. fell in love with Dallas. That's how we came to love Dallas. And we kept joking every time, man, we're just going to move here. And it was a joke and a joke and a joke. And finally we came down in no December 19th and we said we were driving home. And again, I think everything happens for a reason. I was on my phone and I seen commercial property and I was like, wow, this building looks like a studio. We wouldn't have to put a lot of money into it. I mean, we couldn't afford a hundred thousand dollar build out. And yeah. so we drove home, got back, shot the next day of a full day of sessions. We turned right back around, came down, looked at the building and put an offer in, not even knowing this is like a good spot of Texas. Right, yeah. I had no idea what Frisco was. Like, what? And bought it moved our entire family it was about 90 days later because it was it was just this last week that was our anniversary for moving four yeah. years ago so yeah and then texas shut down the day we moved here for covid <laughs> so wild Yay. winning that is so wild you're like yes this is awesome let's leave our entire book of business yeah bye move south buy a building and It'll work out. shut it down we had no plan B, I'll tell you that much, because we <laughs> sold the snowblower. We weren't moving back north. Yeah. And <laughs> we just, we... We had got the thing was we had a marketing plan in place that was that was working and we had the studio ready to go, but then COVID didn't even allow us to open. We couldn't even be open. Yeah. We weren't an essential business, all that jazz. And so we had three months of no no work. And I don't know about you, but being an entrepreneur, not being able to do anything for three months, you just want to like chew your nails off. Like yeah, that is. And we were freaking out a little bit on the whole money side. But right. as it turned out, after that, we opened up. We had our best year ever. We continued to grow. Last year was kind of a, a steady year for yeah. us. And uh, we're we're up this year already. I'm so excited for it. So turns out just going all in. You have no other option. You know, Shane's dad always says nothing will uh, ensure survival ensure survival like the hunger of your children. You're going to find a way to make it work. Yep. And we not only moved here and did that, we actually were partners with Shane's dad before we had moved and we bought out each other because we wanted to grow and do different things. Yeah. And we had one month of savings to do that as well. And we just hit the ground running like, all right, what do we got to do to make this work? You know, I'm not afraid to go get a second job if I have to, to, to support the kids and right. 
and I'm still not ever that big. Like I will never be the person that's like, I'm never going to do anything else in life. This will be the way, you know, if, if something presents itself or something goes downhill, I'm the first to be like, all right, paper route. What do I got to do? What do I got to do to support my family? Well, yeah. And because the kids, I mean, they're along for the ride, right? Like they don't really get a say in the matter. There might be, Hey, what do you think about? But at the end of the day, mom and dad make a decision. Mom and dad make a decision. Yep. And whether that plays out good or bad, the kids still don't have any say in that. No. And so we got to make sure the lights are on, there's food on the table and all, and all those things. And the things that you have to do, the numbers you have to crunch, the the nights you don't sleep, the stuff that you have to go through, hopefully they never really know. And it's until it's appropriate. And then because right. there's, there's a lot of life lessons and stuff to learn there. But no, that's awesome. I love that you guys kind of went all in and just tossed it all and like, hey, you know, what? we got this successful business here, but we'd rather be. And so let's go do it again. Right. And I, I thought yeah. that was pretty cool from the first time that I, I spoke to you. Now, another thing I really like about you guys is talk about what y'all specialty is, your studio. Ah, yeah. So that was something that I really wanted to fine tune and hone in on because when you start in any business, I think really you do as much as you can. You like you're in, you dive into all these areas. And so we did, we did weddings, sports, seniors, families, children, the whole nine yards, bunny rabbits at Easter time, you know, whatever it was. And when we were moving here, Shane and I were really trying to fine tune what we loved what our passion really was, what we knew we could do better than anyone else. And so those two things are, and the main one really, and I just had a conversation with my manager this morning, they're still booking like three to one, is pets. And we're finding that a lot of studios don't even allow dogs or yeah. cats or anything like that to come in their studio, which I get pets are not always like your own pet. They don't take care of everything and they pee and poop and do all that stuff. So we specialize in pet fine art, very simplified. We don't do do, you know, all the crazy backgrounds and all this jazz. It is a very simple focus on the eyes, especially yeah. with darker dogs, just focusing on the, the, the emotion from that pet that you can just see to their soul. That's what we wanted. And so that's what we focus on. And then we also photograph families in black and white in studio. So we do two things and two things only. And, and I love that because I can really just hone in on it. And people love that we allow pets in our studio. That's it's so crazy to me, but yeah, that's fun. It's a lot of fun. And I love that. What drew you to the pets and the black and white in studio only like, because to your point, okay. most studios, they may have their style, mm -hmm. but they will do whatever. And we have some good friends who are really talented photographers and their post editing style is extremely unique. And I don't, hire them to do a lot of our stuff, but certain things I know it can only be them because yeah. I don't know hundred percent what it's going to come out like, but I know it's going to be incredible. <laughs> so I need something a little over the top, something a little more artsy, something a little more fun. I'm bringing them in. If I need something yeah. more straight laced while they can do that stuff, I don't hire them to do that stuff because it's just not, it's not like who they right. are. Right? right. So what made you go to like, you know, we're going black and white and we're going pets and that's it. Oh, okay. So families, it was easy. Every, and I say this with the most grace, but every photographer that starts does outdoor photography. So they're always outside natural light. It's easy. It's free. And we went a step further in Nebraska and we were doing studio, which not a lot of people could do. Right. So that set us apart. But then to take it one step further and go to black and white for family, we did that because I'm feeling more and more as I go through life that it's not about this. It's about this. It's about the relationship and the handholding and the connection between families. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what the hell's going on. Can I swear, by the way? I should. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Say whatever you want. It really doesn't matter what is going on in the world. But what's important to me is to see my baby girl's eyes, to see my son holding my hand, to see the connection and how close they look between my husband and my son. All those connections get yeah. lost when you're dealing with nature and everything else behind you. But when you simplify that down and just say, I just want to see the eyes and I want to light those, yeah. then you can really start to see the connections between mm -hmm. families. So we we said, we're going to do that. And and again, that's not for everybody. Like you said, there are people that are like, wait, can I have it in color? And I'm like, no, yeah. if you want color, there's 9 billion photographers out there that'll do it in color. 
I want you to look on your wall and not see anything but the eyes and the and the expression. That's what your focus should be on when you're looking at a family portrait. In my opinion, that's just what we do. Sure, yeah. And so that's why we chose that. Now with pets, it's very similar. Again, a lot of there's there's always a when people call <laughs> this is big in weddings. I just want candid portraits. I don't want anything posed. I just want to be like frolicking through the fields. And I'm like, that's great. Do you know how to do that? And they're like, well, that's what you're for. I'm like, I can't make you be candid. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. That's a very hard thing to do. And not very many people can just make it look good while you're photographing it. You might be laughing, but every mom's going to be like, I don't like that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No, like I they, know exactly what you're talking about. Big giggles and you're like, ha, ha, ha. Well, that looks like crap on videos yeah. or on film. And so that was always very hard. And so with pets, you see, I love, I actually love the pet portraits where they catch them with like eating food. I think that's freaking cool as hell. But that's just a funny factor. When right. I'm looking on the wall with my dog, I don't want it to be about everything else. I want a simple background that doesn't compete. And I want it to be just showcasing my dog's fur, the the different hues. You know, Abby's got the, the she's very white now. And I want that to come across. Crossed. Yeah. I don't want to, you know what I mean? So I, so for us, we went to a very simplified portrait to showcase the details of the pet, the eyes, the tongue, like she has a black spot on her tongue. I wanted that to come out her little whisker, sure. you know, all that stuff. So have you found since you went from, I don't have a better word for it. So I'll say generalist from a mm -hmm. photography standpoint to, Hey, we're going to do these pet portraits and we're going to do this black and white in studio portraits fine mm -hmm. art you started to grow or started to grow with the right type of clients the people you want to deal with versus the everybody else's um that is a tough question so i think we are seeing a shift and there are people that ask questions because some people don't, they will, for some reason, they'll get on, they'll fill out a form. Maybe they found us on Facebook and then they still ask the questions and they're like, wait, what? It's only in black and white if I do a family session. Right. So then we have to explain it to them. And we're like, look on our website. I want you to be comfortable with our style before you see it. But I would say there's been very rarely does somebody come in and go, whoa, I didn't know it was only going to be like this. I prefer this. They just don't book. They right. like the difference. I think more so I, people love that we are allowing a pet to come into a studio to give something that they aren't seeing already. They aren't, they aren't wanting from us the run through the field dog portrait, which is really cool. If you've got the dogs that, that love to do that and you right. can catch it and it's, you know, but that's, they come into us because our team explains to them, we want this to be about the details and the relationship between you and your pet. And we don't want any distractions. We don't want squirrels. <laughs> squirrels. <laughs> so literally. <laughs> yeah. Now you get the picture of the ass into that dog tearing off the, after the squirrel. You exactly. Know. You're like, well, that sounds like that. So I don't, I feel like we are growing in if we were in Nebraska doing this, I don't know if we would have the crowd to support us because mm -hmm. there's just not as much population, which stinks. I wish we could still be there in some ways. But I think that a lot of people are starting to notice us now. We've only been in town four years. I bet it takes yeah. another 10 to 15 years before us to be a household name because it's just so big. So I would like to think that growing and continuing to go on, people are like, if you want black and white for your family, this is where you go. If you want simple fine art of your pet this is where you go yeah that's what i want that's cool i love that mm -hmm. and that clarity is good too because when you don't have that clarity as an entrepreneur you can waste a lot of time chasing different things and yeah. you know it, and to try well that didn't work well it didn't work what it didn't work for three days it didn't work for a week it didn't work for six months what what didn't work and a lot of times i you know, at least i know with me if i try something or i take myself down a path and i know it's something i really don't want to do and I have no interest in, I will self-sabotage the hell out of that thing. Like, oh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> and and now the thing is, I could have made it work. Right. But I didn't want to. And maybe it was the team collaboration. Maybe it was whatever. But at the end of the day, if I'm not excited about it and passionate about it and able to convey the value behind it, That's key. It's, it's not going to work. It's not going to yeah. work. And so, you know, entrepreneurs spend so much time chasing the next big thing or the next shiny object product to pull into oh. their business. And, Photographers are bad at that. Right. Now, well, now we're doing drones. Now we're doing video. Now we're doing all these things. 
And I'm like, okay, you can offer all those things. Are you exceptional at all those things? Because yeah. at my wedding, if I'm going to have a photographer for a wedding, I want the best one that I could afford who has a style that I enjoy. If I'm going to have a videographer, Devin and I got married a long time ago. We were dirt poor. We, I think someone held like a little like, hand hand cam or whatever they used to call them you know what i'm talking about no, I I still have it in my closet yeah there you go you know exactly what i'm talking about and you know that's a, and that's how we recorded the wedding photographer was dirt cheap and we got our pictures from our wedding and we do have a a lovely tacky album that has all of our pictures in there but the best pictures that we have we put disposable cameras on everybody's tables Yep, and I they took pictures, and then we went and took like a hundred of these things to the the photo store and got them developed and developed. People don't even know what I'm talking about right now. When I'm oh yeah, these and you things. got like five. You're like, okay, well, out of that group of twenty five, didn't they have like twenty five shots or thirty? Yeah, they shots? were like twenty five shots. You might get five or six that were good, but and these people <laughs> were wasted at our wedding. Man, they got screwed up, and there was an open. We got married two weeks after I graduated from college, so a lot of our invite lists were like all of our college friends. And it was supposed to be a cash bar, cash oh. bar, man. I thought people brought a lot of money to my wedding to celebrate us because people, there was just plates on top of bottles. All the tables are covered in <laughs> bottles. Well, someone's like, Josh, let me buy you a beer. I'm like, all right. Well, I go over there and I noticed there was no money transacted. I said, Hey man, you got to pay the bartender. He's like, no, that's the funny part. I'm buying you a beer, but it's a cash bar or a open bar. And I'm like, what? We're like two hours in. And I find oh. out, and it became a whole thing, and it ended up working out fine. But, oh, oh, yeah, they were going hard at our wedding. So these pictures were total dog shit. I mean, they were horrible. But they're, they're, some of them are just hysterical and so fun when we look back on it. But the, the, the point I was trying to make before I started thinking about that silliness was, you know, now they're doing drones, they're doing video, they're doing weddings, they're doing uh, commercials for, for businesses, they're doing all this stuff. Is any of it exceptional? Is no. any of it where like your passion is really behind? And like, what happened if you were doing the part you were passionate about? Yeah, I feel like you'd sell a lot more of it. It would reflect in your work. And because we've had, yep. God, we, we've we had ideas of spinning off so many things over the years. And everything always took a back seat to the training of the dogs because that was our main thing. And it was also what we were most passionate about. And so if yep. we tried to do something too soon, it would never really take off enough. And for me, it, we could have forced it, but we didn't have the right support. We didn't have the right leadership in place on the training side for me to take energy and go towards boarding and daycare. Or, you know, we, we started a, a media company last year, you know, and the, some other stuff that we're doing or like the coaching program and stuff. Like we couldn't have done any of that if we hadn't gotten the right people in place yeah. to create margin for me to step aside a little bit from the training okay. thing and not sacrifice yeah. the quality, our reputation yep. and what we're known for, because everyone's like, I want Sonny to take these pictures. You know, I, I want Josh to train my dog. Well, yeah, no, you're that was the biggest hurdle. That's why we moved. That was one of the big reasons why you moved. Right. Yeah. You, and I think that's the biggest thing. People bite off so much and they never do anything really good. And then every area suffers and yep. you're like, why is everything going down? This one I thought was great when in reality you didn't have SOPs in place. You didn't have the right people there to run that so that you could grow. You're exactly right. Yeah. And, I mean, we've talked about other things before. We've talked about expanding. I still want to expand, but I will not expand until I have this so concrete solid here that we're good. And if that means we only, we'd never open number two, that means we never open number two, but I don't want to jeopardize my life. And, and, and we tell people like, this is our bread and butter. Like this is the girl that brought you to the dance. You can't forget about her right? because otherwise you're screwed. And I don't have other forms of retirement, just chilling, waiting for me. Like, oh, we're good. Right. This is just a hobby. <laughs> well, no. I would tell anybody who's, who's, and you and I talked about this at, when we sat down for mm -hmm. coffee that day, because you had talked about wanting to expand and maybe go to another city and, and stuff like that. And I, I think I told you this when we talked before, because I, I scaled very quickly and I don't mean that like, oh, I'm just the man and I scaled quickly. No, I was too damn stupid to realize I shouldn't. And so I did. Well, and I had it. it was such a nightmare. And because yeah. I didn't have the right people and I expected people to care as much as me and all of those things. And I wasn't, 
equipping them to care as much as me. I wasn't compensating them to care as much as me. I, I, I was so weak as a leader back then to think that I could do that was really asinine. The fact that we still have those places today is really a miracle and due to probably just sure will of me not quitting um, and, and refusing to ever quit. But now I look at it and I look at it over the last couple of years, we have wow. incredible people leading these things, several of which you've met and got to spend some time with yeah. through Apex and stuff. Oh, we and, have a great team. Gosh, I, like, I am very, I wish I had that. We're, we're still working on that and we're getting closer. But like you said, you have a great team in place, man. I can't even imagine. <laughs> Well, you know, it, I'm, I'm like, finally, like I got some people I deserve, man, because I wasted a lot of time on a bunch of duds for a long, long time. And, but that, again, that's a reflection of what I was willing to accept as a leader. Right. And I was probably only willing to accept lesser leaders because I myself was a lesser leader. Oh, I think that is a nail on the head there. And I still think that I struggle with that yeah. all the time. I tell Shane, I don't feel like I'm a good enough leader, Shane. I don't yep. think I'm doing good enough for him. I don't think I'm being that person. He's like, you do more than you think you do, but yep. you're comparing yourself to people in Apex. like, And that's what I do. So I'm like, I look at you. I'm like, wow, look at what he is accomplishing and look what he's doing. And, and then I look at other people that are in different industries, but they're still growing. And I'm like, I'm not doing enough. I, I'm not giving enough to my people. But then I step back and realize, okay, I'm not as big as some of these. I can't yeah. offer the the salaries quite yet. I can't offer all of that yet, nope. but I still feel like I'm not as good. And maybe that'll never go away. Hopefully it doesn't because then I won't ever strive to be better. Well, yeah, but you want to strive and grow. That's who you are, right? Like yeah. it's you. The, the big, huge lesson for me that that I, I was just talking to my mother about this last night. Um, Aww, we, I love that. It, well, we every Sunday we do Sunday supper. My mom, my grandmother comes over. Sometimes friends will join us or whatever. And last night we happened to go over to some really good friends of ours house and we all went. And so we're all pretty tight and we're having dinner and some people are outside. My mom and I are inside. We're talking. And I said, I got to get better about. Oh, I said Kiki's curse. And I hope she learns to manage it better than I have in my life. I never see the moment right? Like we will hit milestones. We will achieve objectives. We will crush goals. And I am so far ahead already onto what's coming next, where I think the direction we're going, I do not get distracted at all or entertained at all, or really any pleasure from accomplishments. Now the, hmm. the, the flip side of that is when I fuck up and we have a failure or we get our ass handed to us, I can extract a lesson really quickly and move on. I don't get hung up on that either because I'm, I'm mm. still so forward focused. And the thing that I've, the last couple of years, I've really tried to take it and recognize is, and I bring it back to you, the people part. Like I, I do recognize and I am very proud of the small group of people who we've been able to raise up as leaders into certain positions where they've been able to start building the, their own businesses within our organization right? Yeah. And grow and develop. I am so proud of that. I'm so proud of that. And I recognize that achievement because I see it. I recognize how difficult it is to do what they've done. And mm -hmm. that's the part where I can celebrate and pay attention. But I think I'm only able to celebrate that because they're the handful of people I still deal with directly. So my leadership lesson for me that I learned was I can't deal with everybody. If I do, I'm terrible. I'm, I get frustrated. I, mm -hmm. I I don't lead or coach well. And Katie Yergin, who you know, she worked mm -hmm. real hard. She's like, okay, look, let me take this off of you. These are now my people. I talk to these people. You just talk to me, right? Gotcha. And I will handle them. And so now I've got my head trainers who I deal with, who run my locations. I've got my executive team who I deal with. Um, and I've got my executive assistant. Everybody else, I don't talk to. I don't interview. Yeah. I don't hire. I don't know if they know me. I, you know, I, I I mean, they know me, but like, I can't, I don't have the bandwidth to pour into them. But if I can take right. everything I got and pour into my top people, then it's gonna just trickle. they can trickle that down. And that yeah. was the part I was not good at when I first started scaling. I was just plugging whoever in place that wanted a job. Yes. And then I'm like, I can motivate them to care as much as me and get them going. And so as you do have this thought process of scaling, right? It's like, who's coming up with you right now that 
is that growth mindset is that, Hey, whatever day it is, whatever time of day, you know, Sonny, you know, I got your back. I can step in. Who's that person that your team organically goes to whether title or not, who's that person that your team organically goes to for advice, care, Hey, I screwed this up. What would you have done different? Because we all have those people on our teams. And now you're starting to identify who those leaders are. It's not the loudest. It's not the most outspoken. It's not the most visible person a lot of times. Like who organically does the team trust? Who do they go to? And if you have that person from within, now you can start to build with them, right? And we've, we've seen a lot of people out from Virginia to lead our Texas, to lead Wisconsin, to lead Detroit, you know, different places across the country, but they've all come up from within. And so we know them, they know culture and they just get poured into from us, but I'm able to pour real heavy on them because I'm not pouring into everybody. Everybody. Yeah. And that's where we're just getting to that point where Jamie's been with us for 10 years and she really does a lot. And I, it sounds silly, but I see it in Carter. He is, he is the, he's very good at not letting the emotion part get to him because yeah. he's a numbers guy like Shane, but he sees the bigger picture and he's like, I, we need this and this, and we need to move towards this area. And he's like, it's okay, mom, we had a down week, but we're still up on the month. So we can have a bad week as long as we catch back. Like he sees that. And, and so a part of me is kind of being selfish. Like I don't, I want him to stay with us for life, but I know that that will probably not happen yeah. unless we can continue to pour into him enough because he's he's the type of person, I don't know about Logan, but you got to continually give him something that he can like chew on. He's got to yeah. be going because otherwise he'll get bored. He'll get content and then he's going to lose the the bigger picture. But if he yeah. sees, he's, he's, he's money driven, which... Yeah. Isn't it? Well, you got to be a little money driven. Otherwise, what else are you doing it for? You know? Well, but- for sure. You know, because money, you know, you can say what you want about it, but like, well, it's about my family. I'm like, well, do you like to feed your family? Do you, does your family oh. like to read with lights on? Does, ooh, that warm water sure felt nice, didn't it, this morning? Like, that takes money until they come up with a different way yeah. to pay for this shit. You know, money, yeah. money solves a lot of the headaches. And so, you know, people, there's a lot of people used to work for us over the years. And, you know, their big insult towards me shit on josh is all he cares about is the, the numbers the money it's just right. the money side of it ah. like well i mean it's pretty damn important i mean this is how Absolutely. i take care of my family this is how i take care of your family actually you know these people who want to say these things i can stop caring about the money sure i'll stop caring about the money and you won't have a job right so yes do i care okay. about the money yeah do i care about the money more than the dogs no because I know if we don't care about the dogs and do right by the dogs and do right by the clients, the money doesn't come. Like, what the hell? You yeah. know, and so it, it's just people's mindsets and the shifts. And like you're talking about with Carter, the thing that's really cool and like what I've noticed with Logan in I, one of the main things I'm so excited about Logan being a part of what we're doing is Carter sees stuff from such a different vantage point than you guys. Yes, we just and, went over this two weeks ago. Yes. Yeah, and that's not a bad thing at all. No, I'm and, super excited for it because he comes back and we're like, huh, I didn't even didn't even realize that. And he's like, yeah, this need, I'm, it has changed us already in the last, he's only been with us three months. Yeah. And it has changed our world of thinking already just because of those little things. Like you said, like you just, you gaze over it every day and you don't even realize that there's yeah. an issue or maybe a new perspective or from his world or making it, all these things are coming into play now. We're like, wow. You're My biggest thing is I've had to stop. Like he, he has a lot of why questions. He's like, okay. And I operate from the standpoint of like, dude, just, you know, like you don't know this. Like, well, yeah. no dad, I'm freaking 19 years old. I just started working for you. I don't know jack shit about this or really any other real life type stuff. You're yeah. supposed to teach me, right? And, and he, would, he doesn't raise his voice if you yell at me, but I'm the one who asked me why. And I'm like, bro, cuz, huh? You know, and that's I'll, do the same thing. I'll be like, just do it. He's like, why? Why, why does it work yeah. like that? I'm like, well, how do you not know it works like that? Like it just, it just works. Right. It's like, I want to know why. And I'm like, okay, take a step back, Sonny. Like clearly he wants, it, it's crazy. The, the similarities. And again, he would have never jumped into this. Yeah. I don't think at all. Logan, now, pop on here. It's crazy to me. I love it. It is, is your father getting better at explaining um, things in the last couple of months <laughs> since you joined? I, the laugh says it all. Never mind. Yes. <laughs> 
like I'm out. <laughs> yes, yes and God. Well, I Very similar that, to be but... recording ourselves when we talk to Carter because when he comes home, you know, like, and I'm the big cheerleader right now because he's in sales in the right. studio. And so yeah. I'm always like, you know, go crush it today, bud. You're, you know, all the, the right people are coming in today and yeah. And they're there for a reason. And you know that this could be the last portrait they ever have of their pet. And you need to make that special for them. And he sometimes I don't, I, I know he hears hears it, but I don't know if it sinks in. And so I, I'm continuing to tell him that he's probably like, mom, I get it. Like this is, but he kind of takes that emotion out of it sometimes. And I'm like, you got to know this is emotional. This is an emotional purchase. Yeah. 100% of our clients are emotional. This, you don't need a portrait. No one needs a portrait. It's very emotionally based. And he has to remember that when he's dealing with people that even if they're fat shit crazy, which there's plenty got some good stories on that. <laughs> you have to give them, you have to be emotional. Yeah. You know, what's so fun is like one of the things that was very unexpected to me with having a child come work for me is that I love the part, the podcast wasn't necessarily the plan of him like helping with it and stuff. And when it's just me in the studio, we'll go back and forth and talk about things and different stuff on the show. But the education he's getting from just some of the stuff you said today, right? And other people that we've had on, like yeah. it's just real life education. And in spades, he's learning so much more about real life, just real life and yes. how to be a human and a good human being and and learning from, from people. I love this side of it. But one thing I, I've done with Logan, and I would highly recommend considering with Carter, is that I try to include, I'll try to invite Logan to a handful of meetings every week that have nothing mm -hmm. to do with what he's doing just to expose them to different parts of it. And yeah. so if, if we're, you know, maybe it's banking, maybe it's accounting, maybe it's, you know, sales, maybe it's market, who cares? Like it, my coaching calls sometimes, unless they have stuff that they need to talk about privately, you know, I'll ask and if it's fine, I'll bring them in. But I try to involve him in a lot of stuff. Because yep. the hope is, my hope is that he wants to work with me, right? Not for me, but with me for a long time. Like, there'd be no greater honor for me than if my son, if we build something my son decides he wants to be a part of. No pressure, Logan. Yeah, no, no pressure, Logan. No pressure. But at the same thank time, you. though, I want him to be exposed to so much stuff because he already knows. Well, there, I'd have no greater honor. And really, I guess I would have a greater honor. The greatest honor would know that my son is choosing to do exactly what he wants to do and that he knows he that his mom and I would support that. Right. Yes. And that to me, him knowing that, and I think he does know that. Um, Cause you don't want him to come in and be like, I'm doing this for my dad, but it's not my passion. Like you, you yeah, still want no. them to genuinely be happy about it. And that's where we yeah. are with Carter too. And when you say bring him into different things, it's so funny. You should say that we are so much alike. I love finding couples that, that share the same things. And I think I've never, I did not have that till I moved to Dallas until I joined uh, Apex and really got out of just the photography yeah. world. I didn't realize that there were other people that had families that did this. I know it's crazy, but That's you just weird. you're in your bubble. <laughs> so weird. Other families do this, but Shane and I, Shane will do that. He will have, we have investments with some people and he will be like, Carter, I want you to sit in on this call or tax prep. Yep. I want you to sit in on taxing. I want you to listen to my accountant and how they're talking about things. And it's in my opinion, because he told us he's not going to college. It's just not his life. He doesn't want it. He's, he's, that's not the person he is. And we said, that's fine. What are you going to do? What do you want to go do? Do you want to, you know, and he's, he is learning his life lessons. He is learning life and how to do business. Yeah with us. And I would rather invest in, you know, he's going to, I'm going to send him to uh Stuman and, and minor and let him sit in for that two day sales yeah, that's so great. that he can bring value to our team because I can only do one day. I was like, well, I can get him there both days. So yeah. I'm going to send him there, but I, but I'm sending him in with expectations. I need five things I can bring back to my communication team for bookings. Yep. I need five things you can do in studio for sales. Yep. That is your mission. And we're, we're doing these things for him and I'm spending a thousand bucks on it, but that is nothing compared to what he would have spent in college and the sure. lessons and the rooms that he's going to be in priceless, priceless. Yeah. So yeah, that's such a great point. Yeah. Such a great, that's point. what we're doing. Talk to, talk to the listeners about sunny AF. <laughs> this is talk my passion. To, tell, tell them about this because this is one of my favorite things about you. <laughs> and I love a lot of things about you. I just think you're great. And but but 
talk to people the mission behind this sunny as fuck. Sunny as fuck. Okay. So sunny AF came about about a year ago and I was sitting with, do you know, Bijal? Yes. Okay. So we were at an event and I was explaining to her what I wanted to do. And I was like, here's the deal. You know, Delilah, which you probably remember Delilah, like she's the talk show radio at night. Mm -hmm. You know, she's like, love someone tonight kind of deal. All this common yeah. voice. Delilah she's after still dark. on, by the way. I had Is no she? idea. Yes. Wow. I was like, holy shit, Delilah's on the radio. So in my mind, I always wanted to be the person who gave you good news during the day. I'm tired of the politics. I mean, we're talking, this has been like 10 years ago. I was like, I'm tired of the BS. I'm tired of news just preying on bad things to make people talk about drama and get them all scared and all this bullshit, right? And I said, I just want to make people happy. That's all I want to do. So I have a video and it's going to come up in Sunny AF at some point where I'm in my winter coat and I told Ava, I'm going to make these signs and we're going to go stand on the road. And they're just going to say, you are beautiful make it a wonderful day or have an amazing day. And I stood on the side of the road and I would just hold this sign up and it was freezing. It was cold as fuck in Nebraska at that time. And <laughs> as many honks as I would get, it would just give me this, in, I think it's endorphins. I don't yeah, know. I'm not yeah. a chemical girl. And it just made me feel good. And I was like, God, if I could do this all day, I would just make people feel good all day long. I just want to talk about how amazing they are and do this. And so when I said that to Bijal, I said, but the problem is I swear. So I can never be on the radio. Plus radio doesn't pay worth shit. And I'm not going to do that. So I still got to make money, right? It comes down to like, I still got to pay for my family. But I've always wanted to have that avenue that I did on my own. You know, my husband and I do the studio together and that's us. But I want to be, I want to bring something to the table for us. Yeah, and yeah. How, how much better can I do this for not only myself, but to show my kids that when you're helping other people, that's so fucking awesome you yeah. it just makes you feel better and so sunny af came out she's like well so you're sunny as fuck and i'm like yes i am i am sunny as fuck <laughs> ah, i'm not gonna hide it anymore that i swear i think you can be a person who swears and not be a bad person and my kids know this because they don't swear but they know i swear and they know when it's appropriate and when it's not and so that came about and so then i started speaking with some people on uh, youtube you know i'm working with owen and i was like i want to be the person who can do everyday things. I have a lot of mom experience. I have a lot of entrepreneur experience. I have a lot of yeah. marriage experience. Let's be honest. You and I are like in the top 1% of people still married. And those that crush it, just crush it. We win in all facets. Winners win. It, man. We win. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I know a lot. I know. I know. I don't know shit about fuck, but I do know some things about some things. <laughs> and so I wanted to be that person. And so I am now creating videos oh. for people to make them laugh while learning experiences or just talking them through life experiences, whether it's mom, entrepreneur, marriage. I want to appeal to everyone. I don't want to be like so niche in that. I just want to make people, just make people fucking smile and yeah. have a good time and forget about all the stupid bullshit that's happening in the world. Because I'm telling you, there are so many people that get fixated on that. My dad and my brother are that. Sorry, dad and bro. But they do. They get so fixed on the world's coming to an end. And if this doesn't happen, we're all fucked. And that's all their mind thinks about. And I yeah. think laughter is the best medicine. I will be the dumbass for you. I will look like a total idiot. I don't care. I think that's why our marriage works better sometimes. Like yesterday, I jumped on top of Shane in the wine room and Charlie was sitting next to us. I go, you think I'm weird, right? He's like, yep. And I'm like, <laughs> winning. So I don't give a shit. Like I want yeah. them to do a healthy marriage a healthy relationship with, you know, our, our views on Christianity, all that is very important to me, but I still think you just need to have fun and swear a little bit. Fuck the world. Let's yeah. Hey, I agree. I can't, you know, I, yeah, I mean, I agree with you and I think it's great. And I think that, I mean, when you walk in a room, I mean, just the whole vibe and dynamic changes because literally when you walk in a room, it's just bringing like, joyfulness right and yeah. it doesn't mean like every day is just like you know perfect and all those things it doesn't mean you're not having stressors and challenges at work and you know, with the business and stuff like that i just appreciate how when i'm around you when i've seen you and able to spend time with you you very much are able to be in the moments yeah. and elevate and bring that happiness to situations to bring happiness to someone who really may not be having a great time right now. Right. 
And even if you're not having a great time right now, you're going to bring a smile, a lightness, um, a lightheartedness to a situation that's going to help people help someone deal with something. And yeah. I just, I just think that's amazing. When I yeah. had coffee with, with Sonny last year, um, we're coming up on a year now, I guess, since that it probably was oh, March yeah, last year. year. Yeah. We, and we you know, this place again. is like 10 minutes from my house. I was like, I've never even been here. I didn't even know there was a coffee shop here. That's what happens in Dallas. You, you could be in some new spot every day and never, every day you never even know it. She told me about an app for couples called ask Bay. Right. Yeah. And um, I downloaded it while we were at coffee. And what it does is it sends a, a prompt to you and your partner daily with questions. Mm -hmm. And um, you can do more than one question. We did two questions for a while. I was like, man, we need to go back to one. Um, but, you know, you can also do like an explicit version, which is pretty fun. Ignore that. Logan. I haven't done that but, yet. Did you yeah, do that's, it? That's pretty fun. Yeah. You got to turn that one on. That's a good time. Okay. Um, so, but we've I'm on like 345 days of answering questions on this thing. And so, really? yeah, you know, we're, we really love it. Ask Bay, A-S-K-B-A-E is the app, guys. Um, mm -hmm. You should check it out. And it forces you to take a moment, regardless of what's going on in your crazy busy day. It pushes you to take a moment and just think about your partner. And it'll, it'll prompt memories. It'll prompt yep. conversation. Um, it's. I'm a go, 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 helps, go like, even with those areas that you're like, you know, I, I mean, you've been married 20 years, right? Yeah. It's 20 years, right? Yeah. 20, tw okay. this will be 22. Damn it. Okay. You got me. That's okay. You're a little <laughs> older than me, but that's okay. Okay. So I find still after 20 years that there are some things you want to tell your spouse, but you don't know how to tell them without being a total bitch yeah. or like, you know, like I want more of this. Like, why do you always do this. It fucking pisses me off. And some of the questions allow you to just be open and honest yeah. and say that. And then you're like, and, and it happened just last week. He's like, I had no idea that you really wanted more of that. That makes you happy. And I'm like, yeah, it's like really simple, but I really love it. I, and I don't want the quick question was, it was like, what is one way that I can make you feel special yep. every yeah. day that I might not even know I do. And I'm like, perfect. This is an opportunity yep. for me to tell him X, Y, and Z. Yep. And that's what I love about it. And I think maybe you don't have that, but I do. And I'm like, how is it that I've been with you 20 years and there's still some things I, and I don't want to say I'm scared to say, but you just don't know how to say them right. And well, yeah, I without, think for me, a lot of times, like it, it, with Devin, you know, and, and more so me than Devin, I, I could say whatever to her, but man, if she misworded something, cause I'm just a very sensitive person, right? Like I'd be like 20 years and you didn't, I didn't know. Like I would immediately go into like this guilt thing. And I don't have that feeling with a lot of people, but with Devin, because I truly do want to be my best for her and, you know, make sure she is happy and fulfilled and know she's loved and supported and all those things in every way possible. Right. And if, to find out I was lacking in something would, would really upset me. But at the same time too, I would then look to try to fix it and, right. you know, and then we wouldn't have to anymore, but, but that app has led to some of the funniest conversations for us. And I just really, really appreciate it. I mean, it's probably one of it's it's top five in the last five years. It is a top five most impactful thing that I have implemented into my wow. life. And it's wow. so great. It's just a stupid, silly little app. But yes. it's an awesome thing. It is such a cool thing. And Thank I just you. I don't know. I mean, I personally, a couple of things. One, I can't wait to hang out with you guys again. You guys are a ton of fun. Um Two, I look really look forward to you and Devin getting to know each other more when we make the move out there because you guys will get along freaking great. Um, three, couples retreat has moved to later in the year. It's not happening in April, so I'll send you info. Um, too many people had conflicts, and too many people that really wanted to go had conflicts, and so I just decided to reschedule it to later in the year. So don't do September, please. No, it's not September. It's not September. Okay, because we're going to Europe for our twenty. Gotcha. That's we're a great making trip. it happen. I'm 
making that happen. I, I don't know how, but I'm making it happen. <laughs> it'll be fun. No, I'm thinking it'll probably be like November, early December time frame. Uh-huh. So, but I'll send details to you. But Sonny, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to come on here and talk to everybody. Um yeah. share you and your personality and you know what you I have about. no idea if your listeners are gonna like me or not. So there's gonna oh, be, I, <laughs> there might not be any views. They'll be like, wow, you put a chick on yeah. like oh, I can assure you my grandmother will think you're a trip and she always watches ah. her. I always get okay, I'm sorry, grandma for swearing so much. I just I felt I am so jealous of your Sunday night dinners. I'm telling you that is that is that's like a life goal for me to make sure my kids stay close and, yeah. and we try to have dinners as much as we can. There's so many statistics about having dinners with your children. Yeah. That I absolutely love. But the family dinner later on, that's the one thing I do miss because I don't have any family here really. And yeah. we do get together with the one brother. But anyways, that when you said that, that that kind of hit me and and it falls in line with our relationship retreats that we do once a month, Shane and I. Um, yeah, which so. I think is awesome. Actually, before I let you go, please yeah. drop that bit of wisdom to oh, talk, yeah. talk about that, what you and Shane do. Okay. So about, it was about a year ago. I told Shane, I wanted to take a vacation every month. And he was like, Whoa, can't afford that sweet pea. So we decided to make it a little simpler. And I said, what if we make it a, a retreat to work on our relationship? Because again, just like the app, I think you take your partner for granted. And that's the easiest way for things to go downhill, like fast is if yeah. you don't put your spouse first, uh, right below God for us, but your spouse right up at the top. And so we decided to do what we call relation retreats. And it is once a month, no exceptions, two days away. Now, I know people have some small children, so that's really tough unless you have a grandma, grandpa in town, maybe just do a one nighter. But for us, it took two days because we work together. So the first day, we're not allowed to talk about anything work at all, nothing because that's like one of the hardest things for us to do. Yeah. So we don't do that. We, we talk to each other. We read. We spend time together just really doing us stuff. And then number two day, we can talk about work if we want. But the, the biggest thing is it's two days. We try new spots. We don't eat any any fast food, I guess you could say. Like we went to Granbury, Texas. Yeah. So we had to eat local food. We have to Fun. meet local people and spend money with locals so that we're That's supporting cool. their businesses. We're learning more about ourselves. We're trying new things. We're not just going to Denny's and having breakfast because right, we know yeah. they'll have an egg omelet. <laughs> and so we do that every month. Some days it's expensive. Most times it's not. Most times right. it's it might just be in Dallas. But if I find a cheap flight on Google, I'm like, hey, we can do round trip for 150 bucks. We're going to fly to Bismarck, North Dakota. Right. I, I don't know. Random ass places. And we find cool Airbnbs and we work on us. That's the key. You have to work on each other. I love it. Because otherwise nothing works. Nothing I love works. it. I couldn't agree more. I think that's kind of fun. Got to do way it. Way to lead the way with that. Because people do not prioritize that stuff enough. No. that I, I can't even tell you how many couples I see that I'm like, I'm not a counselor <laughs> and I can't tell you what to do. But I can tell you that the way you talk about your spouse or the things you don't do with your spouse right now are going to lead you down a road that you're not going to like and yeah. you're not going to know it till it's too late. Yeah. So Oof. really important. It Big is. stuff. That's deep stuff. That's it is. Deep. We could do a whole nother one on that stuff. We should do. <laughs> we should do. A, um, we'll do a marriage one next time. We should have Shane <laughs> and Devin on and we'll do. Um, or next time we're in Dallas, that's what we'll do. We'll do yes. we'll we'll do go in studio and do the four of us, and we'll talk about twenty years plus marriage advice, the the imperfect perfection yeah. of the Dwyer and Wilson uh, marriage. So that's, Dwyer Wilson that's throw really down. That would be good. All right, girl. Well, look, I appreciate you. I'm gonna holler at you next time I'm in town so we can catch up. Um, Thank you. And it'll be so good to see you. Thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. You're always so much fun. You made my day exponentially higher today you know uh, just by getting to spend some time with you so I was how can we how can people find you how can they learn more about you um so i'm big 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 on facebook i'm on okay. instagram but facebook is my jam so if you really want to keep up with some cool stuff you can check out facebook my youtube is up and running and i'm getting more and more and more going on there it's the real sunny af on youtube Perfect. super excited about that to keep going so if you just want to laugh go to YouTube, but at, you want to see my everyday life and just how I roll as a mom and an entrepreneur. Facebook's the best way to, to connect with me. And I love helping people. If you've got a business or a marriage or anything that you're just like, Hey, I just want to know what to do when my daughter turns 16. Do you lock her up? You know, I'm cool talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, you lock her the fuck up. Get her inside. <laughs> <laughs> we just say we have one princess. She gets whatever she wants, but if anybody steps on her, we're going to kill her. And Shane's like, I have no qualms using my guns. Like, 
just like I, I said to her the other day, I said, sweetheart, I said, look, you don't got to settle to find the right boy. You know that you don't settle. You have standards. And I really appreciate the fact. And if you just settled for some dusty ass boy, like I would probably be in jail. Do you want your daddy to go to jail? No, daddy. It, you, if I kept talking to so and so, I would. You would have definitely been in jail. I'm like, wait a minute. When was this? She was last summer, but that obviously didn't go nowhere. I'm like, okay, all right. So, Thank God I didn't beat that loser. Yeah. yeah, for real, for real. It, gosh, it's such a funny thing. But you were right, and Logan knows the deal. All oh, the princess, the princess, you know, can do no wrong. Princess gets what she wants. Logan just looks and he shakes his head. He goes, "If I said that to you." I would have been potentially murdered. Like, if I, if I wasn't murdered, I would have at least been very uh, punished. And yeah. he's like, Jane Boy's like, you ate yesterday. What do you want food for today? Go, go find something on your own, dumbass. Yeah. Ma, Dad, can I go to Olive Garden? Yes, yeah, sweetie, you can go take a friend. You're good. No worries. Yeah, sure. Here's, like, what the here's fuck? the credit card. Yeah. Fine. Sorry, so Logan. Can't help true. it. Yeah, so nature. sorry. It is. <laughs> and we're glad we only have one princess. But you know what? It teaches them how to treat women. They understand when they have a daughter someday and the storms came through yesterday and this is totally off subject a little bit, but Carter was like, mom, you're so paranoid. Don't worry. Dad's fine. He, cause he was driving oh, okay. and Carter was home with me. Ava was in Florida. Charlie was at baseball practice and I'm worried about the studio. The studio is open. There's girls there. There's a tornado that did oh, touch yeah. down. Um, right between us, we had major hail and I'm freaking out and I'm texting people. And he's like, mom, stop. You're just making people even more worried. And I go until you have a wife, and children and a business that you have to support and you know that their lives are on the line, you have yeah. no idea what I'm going through. And I may be a little over the top, but I'd rather that than just be like, they're fine, whatever. Yeah. I It's the mama thing. It's like, I can't. And Shane's like, yeah, he just doesn't understand. He has no skin in the game. doesn't matter yeah, if the cars exactly. get blown up and the kids and everything. So right. they don't know until they know. And then someday they're going to look back and go, shit, you're right. Yeah, she's right. right. You guys always are, so that's how 100%. it goes. Well, I appreciate you, Sonny. I'm going to catch you next time. Me. Guys, please feel free to leave some feedback. Share the show if you felt like it added any value. If it made you laugh, and damn it, you know that it did. Um, you definitely need to send it to somebody who needs a smile. Leave a reviews. We, we'll put on here how to get a hold of Sonny if you're interested in learning more and following her content. Um, we'll catch you next time on the Big Dog Podcast.